loud. All right. Hello, beautiful humans. Welcome to episode number three of Orange Pillars. Uh, Pavel and I basically just hang out for a few hours once a month to share stories, perspectives, talk about Bitcoin. And so we record these and uh, post them in hopes that it benefits others who listen. So if you enjoy the show, you can support it by sending some sats to the QR code in the YouTube description, or you can listen to this podcast on Fountain, which is a value for value uh, podcast platform and basically lets you stream sats as you listen, which is pretty cool and uh, lets you boost. So you can send a certain amount of um, sats that you choose uh, if you hear something you like. And with Fountain, you know, aside from the value for value of this podcast, you can actually earn sats from listening to podcasts. This blew my mind a couple of weeks ago when I realized this. So you can, you know, if I listen to like an hour long or an hour and 20 minute long podcast, I can sometimes get paid a thousand sats, which is like a whole new level. It's kind of blowing my mind actually. So um, Pavel, how goes it? How's life? <laughs> Hi, Nick. Yeah, it's excellent here. Uh, maybe, you know, hot a little bit know summer summer time but uh yeah all things are moving in the right direction as long as we are keep, keeping on the bitcoin standard you know yes. everything is excellent if we replaced every weather conversation with a bitcoin conversation <laughs> the world would be orange filled in like yeah, a yeah week. Exactly. <laughs> uh yep it is um dude it's exciting times i uh you know i i tell people bitcoin is my antidepressant um, yeah, definitely. and it's like, you know, I have many antidepressants I use, none of which are pills. Um, you know, going for a walk in nature is one of them hanging out with my family is another, but you know, whether it's buying sats in whatever amount, right. Um, or just listening to a really good podcast, a Bitcoin podcast, like literally that elevates my mood instantly and brings me from this state of like, Jesus, the world is burning down. This is terrible to like, <laughs> this is amazing. We have hope. What am I talking about? I got to do this more often. So yeah, what a time to be alive. Yeah, for sure. Me too as well. So Bitcoin really is, is hope for, you know, for everyone who just wants to, to embrace it. And yeah. they basically everyone can embrace it at this point, as long as they have internet connection device that's that's basically it i don't think we're excluding many people with that anymore you know maybe like <laughs> yeah, a decade exactly. ago we'd say anyone with an internet connection you're still pretty pretty much limited to the luckiest people on earth but now it's like yeah you know i find it very curious this leapfrogging effect that happens in um developing nations where they don't really they they skip technological phases because the newest technology simply becomes much more available and much easier right um someone in a hut in Africa or in uh, a village in the Amazon will not probably ever have access um, to a bank, right? To a bank branch. They won't have access to a lot of things, but what they will have um, is a, probably a cell tower with a solar panel dropped in the middle of nowhere and have access to the internet. And so now yep. instead of having landlines, instead of having Wi-Fi routers, they essentially just have you know, some rudimentary phone that can connect to the internet. And the cool thing now is that coupled with access to internet is access to the world's best sovereign money. And that is yep. like such a, you know, I think it's really easy for us to be in our own places where we're fairly lucky on the global spectrum of things. We have access to financial instruments, financial services. But I think sometimes I listen to a podcast once in a while where people are talking about how much this is profoundly changing the lives of people who aren't as lucky as you and I or anyone in the Western world. Mm -hmm. And it really makes you realize that like, you know, that saying Bitcoin isn't for the billionaires, it's for the billions. And, yep. you know, that's like an unstoppable force because those people actually need Bitcoin, right? Like we have to want Bitcoin to engage with it and to learn about it. People in Canada like really don't need Bitcoin yet. If they're paying attention, they know they need Bitcoin, right? Because the government can turn your bank account off. But I think when the majority of the world needs Bitcoin more than anyone else and has access to it, uh, that's like an unstoppable force, man. That's pretty special. Yeah, yeah exactly. And uh, basically, those people who who need it most, they are currently hurt the most by the inflation because, you know, someone who who lives on a couple of dozens of dollars per month, I mean. That that's all they are holding, basically the the local 
shitcoin cash, which yeah. is uh, yeah, it's 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 not the the wealthiest part that's that's hurt by inflation. You know, it's it's the poorest of the poor. But you know, uh, the solution is here. So it's just gonna you know just a, a little bit of time to, to for people to figure it out. And I think I think uh, the future is very bright. So it's just uh, you know just let's let's take one day at a time and uh bitcoin adoption is growing by all metrics so yeah it's only, only going to be better from here i'd love to hear i know that you had a history in health tech like uh you know education, you, education leveraging technology yeah. um which is funny because i have the same sort of background you know like um this idea that technology is this tool that enables insane scale and access yeah. to people um, if you have quality information and you can give it for free, um, or, or even, like we have digital tools for the health network I work for that we charge for. And this idea that the digital world is a new world where education, um, is completely scalable. And yep. the idea that, you know, I, I see a fundamental, um, sort of similarity between Bitcoin and health, where the only the, the rate limiting step to people being healthier, the rate limiting step to people adopting Bitcoin is fundamentally education, they just need time to actually learn about it. Um, so what, like, where did your background come from? And where do you see that health, uh, you know, tech based education background sort of coming into the work you're doing now? I'd love to kind of hear the backstory there. Yeah, I mean, I was always kind of uh, fascinated by all technology especially since i got my first computer basically i was you know uh, <laughs> enchanted by it so um and i tried to well i tried to make kind of uh, like a big change or a, you know contribute some some big sort of difference in the way uh i tried to fix my the problems that i saw that i saw with education system here in croatia which was, uh, you know, now I know what's the cause of it. It's like the fiat system. But <laughs> back then I didn't really understand that, uh, for example, I, I had very, very um, disappointing, let's, let's call it, experience with my uh, high school as well as uh, university. You know, the, the, the classes are, were not really up to the standard that I kind of expected. I didn't feel that I had much value of uh, by me spending time there and uh, wrote learning all of this stuff that they basically you know kind of uh, shoved down our, our throats i i kind of um, and then i thought that the solution would be to use uh, technology you know internet and uh, video technology and all of that that you can basically leverage to to make this uh university content more available to more people so they can learn at their own time at their own pace um and but you know the the way i tried to to kind of that that was my first startup the way i tried to do it was kind of working from inside the the system inside the university which was heavily find, funded by the government so so basically the, the 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 problem is that you can't really uh i mean technology is uh there was there and is there right now but the incentive structure uh is not mm. so this is why you can't really uh change these systems and that's not only uh you know education which was my kind of focus it's also the healthcare also here in croatia healthcare is uh, heavily you know government regulated and funded uh, you know we have our you know <laughs> all of the shortcomings of that system uh, was glaringly apparent in the last two years but uh, the the solution is not just you know well our government funded hospitals should apply better technology it's not really that it's 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 the incentive from that the doctors have that the staff has there it's all kind of uh separated from the feedback of the of the market of the consumer uh, of these services uh same as same with education so the problem really is at the root uh which is the which is the money that's being controlled by the 
one cent central party and then you know all of this both the education system and healthcare system is funded by by fiat and uh, that distorts all the incentives to because if you are like for example if you are a good doctor or, or if you are a good teacher then in these kind of uh, fiat systems you cannot really advance uh in your career uh while also if you are not so good or not so bad you can't really go uh, go out it's not you are kind of protected from the market forces right. and that produces this big bloated bureaucratic you know sclerotic uh you know <laughs> monster that doesn't serve anyone uh and um and yeah, so I, I now I really feel that basically just minding my own business, you know, and uh, operating on a on a Bitcoin standard uh, not only uh, enhances my you know capital accumulation, my quality of life, but also contributes to you know uh, starving the beast, so to speak. So, I yeah. mean, at least on my little part, it's not. Uh, but again, the more other people, the more my family sees how I operate, the more my friends, colleagues, and community sees how I do things, then more of them will basically, you know, start doing, st start operating on the Bitcoin standard as well, which will starve the beast a bit more. And then, you yeah. know, they start to influence their circle of, uh, of uh, family, friends, uh, and so on. And over time, we will basically kind of fix all of these uh, issues by simply reducing the the demand for for fiat, the, reducing the capacity of the state to issue new money to finance all of these educational systems, you know, uh, healthcare systems, other things that the state is simply now, you know, the state is basically everywhere, um, and. Um, and you can't really fix it from from inside. The, 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 the there is no way uh, to to fight it from from <laughs> from inside. The only way is really, uh, you know, operating on a Bitcoin step. So that's yeah, that's my view. Yeah, I mean, you really do just have to create something better that obsoletes the previous yeah. ineffective system. Um, that is a constant misallocation of capital. Like it really is. Um, a exactly. shame that so few smart people actually see what's so glaringly obvious that you can't unsee when you see it, right? And I think Bitcoin takes off these blurred lenses that everyone's wearing and shows you reality for what it is and shows you how obvious it becomes. And, you know, I've, I, I think a lot about the incentives of health and, um, you know, like questioning, like, why is everyone so messed up, right? There must be something mm -hmm. underlying this idea that, um, you know, really health is our default state if there's no external interruption or, or manipulation in the incentive structures. So if health is our default state, how is everyone defaulting to disease? And once again, comes back to fiat. And, you know, one thing I'm trying to do myself um, with, with the conversations I have with myself and then with the conversations I have with others is change some of the language around that we use around health, right? Like we say healthcare system, it is a disease care system. Yeah. If we call it healthcare, <laughs> exactly. we don't actually acknowledge that we don't have a healthcare system. And this is part of the problem, yep. right? Um, you know, I was trained as a, uh, I was told I was a healthcare professional. I was really a disease care professional. Um, health insurance is not health insurance, it's disease insurance. So if we call these things what they actually are, we can probably start to highlight the fact that we don't have a healthcare system. We're not training health professionals and uh, disease care is only needed if you're not taking care of yourself. And this idea that right now it's rare to be healthy because it's kind of like a salmon swimming upstream, right? The current is getting stronger and stronger. The current is fiat incentives that are pushing you towards disease. And, you know, we're trying so hard to help salmon swim upstream because it's a struggle. When in reality, what, what I realized that Bitcoin does is instead of the stream going the opposite direction where people are trying to go, Bitcoin just switches the direction of the flow so that you can flow down this river, like a lazy river of Bitcoin incentives and be healthy. Um, because the, you know, this, 
this idea that people get compensated for providing disease care but have no tie to their effectiveness is the goofiest thing ever. And, you know, I heard a story once about doctors in China that used to get paid um, based on health outcomes. And the way they did this was super clever. You would get a certain amount of money per person you're in charge of taking care of. Every time that person came to see you or every time that person got sick, you got paid a little bit less. So at the end of the year, if everyone got sick all the time, you didn't make any money. Um, yep. If everyone was healthy because you were giving them the right advice and empowering them, you didn't have to do very much work and you made the full amount of money per person because they were healthy. You're getting paid for health. You're not getting paid for service. And you know, until we switch that, I really think Bitcoin creates this new foundation where we can create peer-to-peer -peer systems where number one, you deal with humans, not companies, because the companies are just, you know, have basically just been infested with this fiat bullshit, um, yep. these fiat incentives. So you deal with people instead of companies, you take out the middleman. So you deliver more value because less of it's being sucked away by these rent seekers. And you can create a system that has actually feedback loops that allows people to rate how effective this person is. Right. So if you help 100 people and 95 of them said this person's amazing, they actually helped me not by making me depend on them or taking drugs by actually taking care of myself. Well, guess what? You're probably going to get way more people come to see you and you can charge a bit more so that you you restore this natural free market incentive for health and compensation that get linked together. And, you know, I think it I, I think it has to start with just like a, one individual who's on a Bitcoin standard who can help others with their health. Um, not by telling them what to do, but to basically say like, here's a big database of resources I learned from. I'll ask you good questions to, to help you understand what you need to work on or get clarity. And you can pay me whatever it's worth to you. Like I already do these value for value payments for people. They'll reach out and say, hey, can I do a one-on-one? -on -one? I'll say, sure, it's 60 minutes, but I only take payment in Bitcoin. You pay me whatever it's worth after the session is done. If you didn't find it helpful, don't pay me anything. If you found it very helpful, yep. pay me whatever you think it's worth. And it's very interesting what some people will send you like a, um, <laughs> this, this uh, emergency medicine doctor, like my specialty is, uh, you know, feet, foot health. Um, and this emergency medicine doctor that works in the Bahamas reached out to our social media and said, does anyone do one-on-ones? I'm struggling with plantar fasciitis. I need some help. And we kind of said, you know, we don't do one-on-ones, but here's some good tools. And she, she was pretty insistent. So I said, okay, I'll do an hour with you. Um, but I only accept payment in Bitcoin. She's like, well, I don't know anything about Bitcoin, but I know I've seen a Bitcoin ATM where I live. Okay. So, uh, you know, do you think I can figure it out? I said, you know what? I'll help you. We'll try. <laughs> so we do the session. It's an hour long. I basically give her no answers. I just asked her questions. What are you doing to work on it? What has worked? What hasn't worked? Are you tracking data every day? You know, have you addressed your footwear? And so I mostly just asked questions, but I could see the light bulb turn on and she paid me $250 us for one hour of my time. And I was nice. expecting like 30 bucks, maybe but either yeah, way yeah. it was non KYC sats. So, so just things like that, where it's like, when you actually just focus on giving people value and you open the door and make it simple, hopefully, and straightforward for them to pay you, they're more than welcome to pay for the value they receive. We just have to have systems that enable that. So, and speaking of, you know, paying sats like one thing you mentioned in the lead up to this conversation mm -hmm. is this idea that you have basically been living on a bitcoin standard um i think you said since like 2020 so yes. i'd love to hear just like practical tips or, or just like your experience in general I, i'm curious because i'm not you know i still <laughs> i still pay for shit in fiat because like i want to get yeah. rid of the shitty dollars and save in the good in the good in the good money um but what's that experience been like you know, anything you can share. I'm really curious to hear about it. It's been really extraordinarily uh, good. <laughs> um, you know, this is, yeah, this is one of my kind of, uh, you know, especially right now, because a couple of weeks ago, uh, since we were kind of, uh, you know, we had this huge uh, sell-off, we, we kind of, hit some, uh, you know, uh, exchange rates under the last bull market uh, cycle top, you know, under 20,000 US dollars per, per coin. And um, and that's when I kind of, uh, you know, there, there was, I, I don't know how to explain it. Some, something strange happened after a couple of days when I basically started um, 
uh, something switched in my mind and I stopped really advising people to to just you know start uh you know start slowly with bitcoin or just you know um, dollar cost average now i i recommend them to to simply exchange all their fiat that they have into bitcoin <laughs> and 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 start start actually living on the bitcoin standard because so my experience is that uh, i mean in uh, from summer of 2020 since I started working for for Safedin, uh, he was paying me in Bitcoin, right? So, uh, you know, at some point, you you basically get to a point where you don't have as much fiat inflows, but you do have Bitcoin inflows. And at some point, all of us will <laughs> will end up with all this Bitcoin stack and no fiat, you know. And you have to start spending Bitcoin, right? You have to uh, you have to eat. You have to you know pay your uh, living expenses and so on so so that was uh, that was the first that that happened around maybe around october in 2020 after a couple of months and that's when i kind of started okay now i i have to exchange my fee uh, ex- exchange my bitcoin and pay for stuff in in bitcoin and that's like uh, it's very scary for for someone who who very rarely did that and uh, because it's like Oh my God! If I sell my Bitcoin now uh, and pay for whatever, then you know, in the future, that's gonna be much more. Uh, I'm gonna lose so much money, you know, in the future because Bitcoin is going up all the time. <laughs> but um, but really, it's like that's that's one of the fallacies that that many Bitcoiners have right now, which is um, the idea that you can. Uh, not spend your like that you can spend money but not spend your bitcoin right because whatever money whatever fiat you actually spend you know on a monthly basis it was the the fiat the money that you could have exchanged to bitcoin right so you could have more sats so so basically there is no way around it let's say you make i don't know sixty thousand dollars per year and you only put maybe hundred dollars into bitcoin right you leave everything else in fiat and then you go your your you know go your way and spend all all of your money and you can you know technically you can say well i didn't spend my bitcoin right i spent i spent fiat but you could have saved up ton a ton more sats if you if you you know in if you put more of your money in, in bitcoin so at some point um uh, you can actually uh, switch completely you know be in a in a full bitcoin standard and um and then you you manage the volatility, right? Because now suddenly all of your cash balance is uh, changing its purchasing power, literally on a daily basis. Like you can wake up and your purchasing power can go up ten percent, or it can drop down ten percent. You know, on a daily basis. So the real the real thing that 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 needs to happen here uh, is you basically have to start budgeting right you have to balance your budget right so if for example if you if you you have to assign your 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 money to in order for this to work now this is something that i have been you know i i was running my zero based budget for almost three and a half almost four years since early 20 2018 uh, that that's when i started learning how to do it and um you know being able to 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 have full control of your of your money of your budget is what enables of is what gives you confidence to really uh go all in and not being um worried about volatility because really what happens actually volatility works in your favor when you are on a full bitcoin standard how does it work for example in this period okay since the start of the year that's that's like uh we have witnessed bitcoin going down from 60 something thousand to to 20000 right so we had a big big drawdown big drop in purchasing power now what happens is that you you basically you adjust your budget right and you start finding ways how to optimize your outflows your spending you will you will sometimes say, instead of spending on something that you would otherwise spend 
you would not spend it, your, you know, your money. When Bitcoin purchasing power goes down, you naturally react to it by tightening your spending. But on the other hand, you start finding ways to, to increase your inflow, to increase your outcome, your, your income, which is which you can do by either uh, making, you know, producing more value at your current job, right? If you are employee in a company, you can you can make yourself more useful to that company and over time you will basically get get more get more raise or you can get on you could get another job, you know, additional client, additional customer that that can that you can serve. And this basically orients you into into this service to others, right? Because you are incentivized to to be more useful to other people, um, to give which more will value. in turn, you know, increase your increase your inflow, and that's perfect because what happens, you know, the effect is during the bear market, during the times when purchasing power goes down. On one hand, you are tightening your spending, so you are optimizing, you are saving up, you know, as much as you can, and you are increasing your your inflow, and, and what ends up happening, you basically you are, you you see your Bitcoin stack growing. At, at rates that you never seen before, right? So that's like, it's beautiful. When And when the bull market comes, you know, when Bitcoin price goes up a lot, that's when you start hitting your savings targets. That's, for example, if you want to save up for, I don't know, for a new car or for you want to upgrade, uh, you know, the place that you live or you want to go to a vacation or you want to purchase anything, you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, the world is full of, beautiful things that other people have made that you may want to partake in experiencing and that costs money and then when bitcoin purchasing power goes up that's when you are basically you know naturally more inclined to spend which is and then you actually what what you do is exactly what all these people who are trying to trade bitcoin try to do they they they're trying to buy low and sell high which is extremely hard you know, even for the best of, of, of world-class traders, they can only maybe, you know, do it like 60, maybe 55, 60% of the time. So they are kind of, because they are constantly fighting with emotions, right? Because when, if you're in on a fiat standard, when Bitcoin price goes up, you are kind of, you know, you, you get this FOMO, right? Fear of missing out emotion. And you are trying to, to increase the, your, your Bitcoin holdings on the way up which is not really what you should do. While on the other hand, now, you know, on the way down, uh, you know, people are kind of scared, panicking because they think that it's going to go down even more. So they are reluctant to, 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 to buy it. And they end up with, uh, with, less, with less Bitcoin. But you, you can clearly see it right now because, uh, you know, many people are still waiting for, for Bitcoin to, to go down even more so that they can, you know, deploy all, all of their dry powder but the, the only thing that's going to happen is if bitcoin for example draws down to i don't know 17 16k if if it does that they will get even more oh my god now i'm gonna wait for i don't know 10 i'm gonna wait till 12 whatever <laughs> it's it for to 12 so so that's and did all of this disappears once you go all in to bitcoin because your frame of 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 looking at the world switches now you truly uh you, you you like your mental math becomes super 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 sharp because now you are pricing everything uh, in in Bitcoin right now you price your income in Bitcoin you know how much you earn per hour you know or per week per month however your pay you know is is structured I mean you you should you should have some sort of inflow if you don't uh, income you you have to get it right everyone needs to I mean unless you are really incapacitated in some way like you should make you, you need to serve other people i mean the root of every income is service to others that's how and really there is no other way to to get bitcoin other than to 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 serve other people and you don't in my mind you also don't need to worry about too much that they have to pay you in bitcoin right i mean it's it's perfect if they if they do but uh, i don't care uh, what what people are paying me and they can pay me for all that matters in i don't know what whatever as long as it's something that i can liquidate back to bitcoin uh when they when they pay me i mean i'm happy to to receive payment in in, in basically whatever currency they they want to pay uh of course i will 
I mean, I will incentivize them to pay me in Bitcoin directly by offering them a discount because then I don't have to, you know, pay the fee to to convert that money to to Bitcoin. But it's it works perfect, especially right now. It's so easy to to do because right now you have these options. For example, what I use on my in my daily life is I use a simple uh, Visa debit card, uh, which is uh, which is loaded with Bitcoin. This is uh, Binance. Binance offers this uh, this service. They they have this uh, Visa card that you can use, and it works everywhere where Visa is accepted. It works in ATMs, and basically you hold Bitcoin on it. And at the point of purchase, right? So let's say today I I went to to, to a shop do, doing some grocery shopping. Let's say the bill is I don't know twenty five euros. At that point, it converts. Bitcoin to 25 euros, pays the merchant, and that's it. I mean, it's like, um, it, it works perfect. And the only thing that I have to do is I have to, every day, I have to reconcile my, my balance. Because if Bitcoin, you know, pumped up, for example, today, Bitcoin is up almost 10% since yesterday, right? I will have to uh, open my budget and reconcile the balances because now I have more purchasing power than I had yesterday so I have more extra money that I have to assign right and then I just assign the extra money same thing would happen if Bitcoin dropped down 10% I would simply then remove this extra money that I have assigned so that I'm back to back to being balanced and when you start doing this this really really I mean it really kind of uh, kind of, you really feel the you align completely with 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 bitcoin kind of realm and what's even better is that you start getting so much more uh, and effective and so much more convincing with orange peeling others that's the mm. the, the 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 greatest thing because you're I living it. this last couple of yeah because you are living it and you are and it, it's like um you know all yeah, it's basically uh, your conviction is so 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 strong that uh, that people will simply you know <laughs> at least you will you will make a huge impact on on the way of uh, on the way they they think and uh, hopefully they will they will figure it out on their own at least they will start dollar cost averaging at minimum but more likely they will hold more Bitcoin and then you get this beautiful warm fuzzy feeling that you are basically uh you know contributing to to the constru- to the constructive efforts of the of the bitcoin system growing right you are literally like um last result uh, uh you know someone who who holds bitcoin doesn't matter you know you are never selling back to like you may have some fiat you know in your in your in your uh, wallet right i i always hold some maybe couple of euros worth of, of of cash on on me but it's not that i that i try to you know um, manage volatility by having a fiat cash balance no uh volatility is managed by uh balancing your budget and um and you know as long as you have as long as you make more than you spend which is what everyone should do you will be fine because at some point you know at sometimes you're like my hourly rate uh, changed a lot since uh, you know I at some points I was earning I don't know this amount of sats per hour, and at some points when Bitcoin was pumping up, my hourly rate in denominating its sats dropped right, and in other times right now, it tripled right now because it's like right. <laughs> So your, so, hourly rate, so, you, so your hourly rate is denominated in fiat. And so what you get in Bitcoin exactly. for that fiat, um, that changes. Yeah, when Bitcoin right. goes down, you're stacking crazy amounts. You're stacking much more. <laughs> and, and, and literally it's like, uh, sometimes I found myself, uh, thinking, oh my God, I would really actually like for, for, for Bitcoin's purchasing price to go down even more. Right. So that I can stack more sats, but so that I can also be more incentivized, more motivated to optimize my spending even more and mm. st- stack, you know, find other clients, find other ways to, to earn even more money to serve more people. So that's like, it's, it's beautiful how it, you know, 
kind of pushes you in that in that direction. So that's that's something that I now uh, you know <laughs> uh, recommend to everyone. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, if you can, I mean, I I know this. It's it's a big it's a big leap, big big leap of faith. But I think, um, you know, it works works perfect for me. Uh, for my younger brother as well, he is also uh, doing this nice. since uh, one year. You know, right now, and uh, and you know, it, it works it works really well. Uh, and volatility actually works in your favor. And one other thing is that, like we are we are used to thinking about uh, fiat, you know, U.S. dollar as stable, right? We call stable coins, and uh, we think that we kind of think that it's stable. But really, especially you know, in the last two years, and you know, this last year you, with the inflation and and things, it's not really. I mean, it's not really so stable anymore. Um, and or, or at least the stability or perceived stability is kind of evaporating. So um, so people will have to get used to the idea that their purchasing power fluctuates by the day. I don't think that this, I don't think it's even healthy to, to think that, you know, this, what central banks try to do, price stability, right? What does it mean really, price stability? You don't really care about price stability what you care about is that you that you have more purchasing power over time that's really what you do what you want to care about you want to be satisfied and happy with your with your finances and uh, and the way to do it is uh, it's really you know looking right in front of us it's just you know <laughs> start operating on a bitcoin standard you know it's it's like the fiat standard is just going to over time incentivized you to 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 get into more debt really uh, and that's not the way to 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 go because it's like always you will always feel this uh, sense of lack of 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 freedom over your options because you are in debt right you, you, yeah. you there's no other way around it you you have to kind of get to the other side and you shouldn't i, I don't recommend for people to save in fiat because that's it's like uh, you're not really getting anywhere, right? You have to out out earn your inflation rate to to stay the you know almost break even. With Bitcoin, it's it's much much easier. And then you know you start you know thinking about the future much more. You can plan, and but you know we all know that that part of the story. Yeah, that's my experience with full Bitcoin standard. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. I think yeah. it's, you know, a couple observations. So number one, I think a big element of being able to do this is your inflows being denominated in Bitcoin, because so long as I'm getting paid in Canadian dollars, um, yeah. if I'm spending my Bitcoin, I have to reconvert more Canadian dollars to Bitcoin. And so I think when your inflows turn to Bitcoin, uh, that's almost like a massive leap in your, and I, I mean, I shouldn't say that because technically if you earn fiat, you can convert it immediately to Bitcoin and basically exactly. make that the case. Um, you know, JW Weatherman yeah. talks about this. Uh, they have this Twitter tagline, get on zero. And yeah. I get what he means now, because basically what you're doing is you're turning your pay into a DCA, yeah. right? The whole, the whole yes, point yes. of the simplicity yes. of a DCA is when the price is high, you buy less. When the price is low, you buy more, yes. it gets automated. And so if you're auto converting to Bitcoin, every time you get paid, yeah. Um, you're essentially DCAing your payroll and turning and, yes. and it's almost like the fiat standard is pure manipulation. The Bitcoin standard is pure truth. Yes. A lot exactly. of people will, you know, like I'm moving from the fiat spectrum from the fiat standard on a continuum over to the Bitcoin standard. Mm -hmm. But what, what I'm kind of realizing is so long as there is any shred of remaining element of fiat standard in your life, so long yes. as you're still on the continuum not being at a hundred percent Bitcoin yes. center, there is still some um, level of manipulation in your thinking. And the yes, only way to get 100% exactly. clear thinking of your spending yeah. um, and your earning power and, you know, how to, how to essentially be on track to, you know, maximize your stack is exactly. to be on a Bitcoin standard. Cause that eliminates full, it fully eliminates the manipulation. And I think exactly. that's very, very powerful. Um, and, you know, the, the idea, you know, this, this bullshit stability that we call that we assign to fiat is yeah. so funny because if you, 
if you go up to someone and say, okay, as a thought experiment, you can either invest in a company that is guaranteed to lose 2% per month of its stock value to infinity. Yeah. So this is like the only path is it's going to get shittier over time, but it's going to do it very slowly, 2% a month. Or you can invest in a company that swings wildly from month to month but makes you 150% a year on average for the past decade. Which one would you choose? The one that's guaranteed to lose 2% a month or the one that swings wildly, but is basically has a track record of gaining 150% year over year, that would be a no brainer. And so this, this idea that people are, I, I think what it really shows is the low, t the um, high time preference mentality where they would ra people would rather have a bit more stability from day to day, even though they're guaranteed to get screwed then they would exactly. to stomach a little bit of short-term volatility and have a low time preference thinking where you're thinking in chunks of a year, two years, five years. Exactly. So I think it's a beautiful illustration of that. And once, once people start to see, once people take off the foggy glasses and start to adopt a lower time preference style of life because they're denominating things in Bitcoin, I think that's where it clicks with people where it's like, wow, I've been thinking about this all wrong. I've been, I've been thinking my currency is stable, but in the grand scheme of things, it's stable, but getting crushed long-term. Um, yeah. And I, you know, I listened to a podcast with Eric uh, Weiss on what Bitcoin did. And he, he talked about Amazon as this beautiful example where he's like, you know, I think if you ask anyone um, if they would, in hindsight, would like to have bought Amazon at the IPO and held it to today, they would probably be like, that's a pretty wise choice, right? The only guy that did that was Jeff and his parents and he's rich as fuck. Um, yeah. And what, but what people don't know is that from the time of IPO, which, you know, Amazon was a company before the IPO, cause you have to get to a certain level to get to a public offering. From the time Amazon became a publicly traded company until today, um, it, six times in that history, it lost 80% of its value. One of those six was a 90% devaluation in stock price. It was not a smooth ride, right? But those who held on and stomached the volatility because they understand, because they understood the value of a dominant network coming to fruition were rewarded handsomely. And so I think Bitcoin is one of those things where we look back at all these tech networks that made people very rich. And we think it was just this linear ascent to like poor, to like nothing to worth a huge amount. It was not. And Bitcoin is, is, is no different. And I think if we just remember, you know, it really is this beautiful thing when Bitcoin corrects because it creates opportunities for people who, to stack uh, at a much cheaper level. But it also just shakes out the people who had no business holding Bitcoin because they didn't have the conviction um, to, to hold on. And, um, and I really think that it's like, you know, Bitcoin is coloring how I'm thinking. Like, for example, our, the company I work for at a company vehicle, it was a luxurious vehicle. It was an electric vehicle. Mm -hmm. We didn't need it. Convinced them to sell it. We bought more Bitcoin and now I drive like some shit box and I feel so good. It's the most satisfying thing to drive because <laughs> I know yeah. the previous vehicle um, turned into Bitcoin, which is going to be a hundred of those vehicles in a decade. So it's like, it was a good trade. Um, and just one last point, I heard someone say this and it really rung home with, with me. I will never sell my Bitcoin for fiat. I will spend my Bitcoin. I'll either save it or I'll spend it. Yeah. I'll spend it buying things I need, but I will not um, sell my Bitcoin for fiat to spend fiat. And I think that is a, that's an interesting way of thinking of it, right? Um, where you're not maybe directly yeah. spending your Bitcoin, but the mindset is the only way I'm letting go of these sats is if I'm spending it, buying something from someone else that I need, not selling it to trade it. And I think that's a good mindset. Yeah, definitely. But uh, this mindset naturally gets kind of sorted uh, once again, once you're in a full Bitcoin standard. And it doesn't matter. Like, like I, I, don't really, I don't even like, first of all, I don't like the word investing in fiat, in, uh, in Bitcoin. Because like, are you investing in, in euros? Are you investing in US dollar? Are you investing in, in Swiss francs? Yeah. No, you're not. You are exchanging, right? You're exchanging your Canadian dollars to US dollars if you go to US and then you you know, people mostly accept US dollars, right? So you exchange your, your money into the local currency. This is why I like, uh, for example, I like Michael Saylor's frame around this. He he delineates the, the word money and currency, which is like, uh, yeah, money is, you know, your, your total economic energy that you can exchange. And then 
local currencies, I mean, if you, if you came to Croatia, still you would have to con convert, you exchange some of your Canadian dollars to, to Croatian kuna, which is now going to be, you know, switched to euro uh, come, come next year, but then you will exchange to euros. So you're not really selling, like, I mean, you can say that you are selling your Canadian dollars and buying euros, but so that's, that's I, I also don't like to think about selling Bitcoin to, to something. I just think about exchanging it, right? With the current exchange rate. So what am I, what am I exchanging it for? Well, for any good goods and services that I, that I want to purchase. So if I, um, if someone does not want to accept directly uh, Bitcoin, right? I can, I have tool, which is this uh, card that, okay, this, this converts my Bitcoin to, to, to what he wants to accept, which is currently yep. euros, right? So, so you, you stop thinking about that because this is like traders thinking. This is some, someone who wants, who, who wants to make certain kind of trades along the way so that he makes more fiat usually. But I, uh, in my mind, the only thing that you should care about is your purchasing power, right? So, and even the amount of Bitcoin, the nominal amount of sats is not really important. What's important is again, your purchasing power because you would much rather have one BTC today, you know, when it has $20,000 worth of purchasing power, you know, you can, you can just imagine this is why budgeting is very good because then you can imagine, like thinking about what's what can I buy with twenty thousand US dollars is much harder. Like you, you are just looking at this number. But if you make a budget, let's say if you if you say okay, five thousand of of uh, twenty thousand dollars, I'm gonna assign to my living expenses for the next x x, x amount of time. Then five thousand dollars, I'm gonna assign to my groceries spending. Five thousand dollars, I'm gonna assign to my transportation cost. You know, and five thousand dollars is gonna be miscellaneous things that everything you know, your whatever clothing. Uh, I don't know, going out and and so on. You just start with very simple assignment. So now you have okay. Now I can see this twenty thousand dollars is actually broken down into four chunks of five thousand dollars, which are assigned to towards different categories of your budget. And then when you start spending. You deduct. Let's say you pay your rent if you are renting, or if you pay you pay your mortgage or whatever you 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 pay. You deduct. Let's say you pay one thousand dollars for your living expenses. Now you have, you don't have five thousand dollars in your in your category. You have four thousand dollars, right? If you go to grocery store and you spend hundred dollars, you don't have five thousand dollars. You have four thousand nine hundred dollars in your in your category. Right. And let's say Bitcoin. Let's say you are on the Bitcoin standard. And you have one full BTC and Bitcoin drops down by 10%, right? Now you suddenly don't have $20,000 of purchasing power. Now you have $18,000 of purchasing power, right? You so you have to adjust all those by categories. 10, you just adjust all those categories. You you shave, you, you, you reduce your categories. And this now when you look at you, you're looking at your budget and you start feeling, okay, now I'm kind of I, I kind of want to be more, you know, think. I have, want to think more about what I'm going to spend my money on. Maybe I'm going to forego this, you know, I don't know, something, you know, going out, uh, or, you know, drinking or whatever. I'm going to kind of save that uh, and be more careful about my spending. And I'm going to find ways to basically get back to my to my original purchasing power. Let's yeah, yeah. let's find ways to reduce my spending by 5% and increase my inflow by 5%. And then I'm going to be back at, at you know, at the purchasing power that I started with. How frequently and are really, you doing that? Sorry to interrupt, but sorry? how frequently are you doing those readjustments? Because I mean, on a like daily we said, basis. the price of Bitcoin, on a daily one, basis. Gr one green candle can go up 10%. So it's like, then exactly. you got to completely change it. Yes, but you are doing that on a daily basis. It takes me maybe five minutes a day hmm. to, to manage my budget. Basically, I reconcile my balances. I balance the budget and I uh, whatever I spent uh, throughout the day, we just, uh, you know, enter that into the budget. So we are tracking all the spending, and that's it. That takes a couple of minutes per day, five minutes, and that's it. And you, you are. <laughs> you I mean, are if you're good with Excel, you can pretty much automate that, right? Like you just plug exactly, in the Bitcoin yeah. price, and it just phew, changes all the numbers. Yeah, 
yeah, I, I run the Google Sheet that uh, refreshes exchange rate, BTC, USD exchange rate every 15 minutes. And it, I just, you know, okay, now it's this this much. I just reconcile the budget and uh, I go on. It's it's super easy. I mean, um, but it, it makes tremendous difference. I mean, it's it really does. Because now, let's say the other day, I got some uh, fiat coming in, right? Uh, for any reason. I mean, some, sometimes people will pay, like for me, sometimes people will pay me in fiat. And I can't, I mean, I, I will still accept the payment. I'm not going to reject the payment. <laughs> now I had this fiat and immediately, as soon as I got my hands on it, I just deposited that on my bank account, wired that to, to Binance, converted it to Bitcoin, put it on the card and that's it. So, I didn't even think about the exchange rate. I just converted it immediately, yeah. right? If I could, I mean, if if I could have this income directly in Bitcoin, I would have it, but I mean, ch chances are still most people will pay you in fiat, but but you are in control what you are going to do with that fiat. So you are just converting it to Bitcoin and uh, moving on with your with your with your money. Another thing that that you start to track is the age of your money. So you start to track how old is your money that you are spending, which is something that you once you start to track, you really you really start to get it right, because let's say now. It, it it really depends on the amount of 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 savings you have and your on your uh, spending rate every month. But uh, if you are able to 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 raise your age of money, so let's say if you are paid today uh, and you spend all the all the money that you are paid tomorrow, your age of money is going to be only one day because your your money is immediately spent. Everything that goes in goes out. Yep. Many people live like that, right? Or, they, or they they live paycheck to paycheck, right? So their money cannot even get to a couple of days old, right? As soon as some money gets in, they are already owe money, you know, they, yes. because they didn't pay in the due time some expense, and then now immediately they have to they have to spend. With with Bitcoin, you are naturally incentivized to kind of uh, first of all to. To think twice before spending either way, because you you always want to kind of hold Bitcoin more. You are incentivized to hold rather than to spend, and with fiat you are always incentivized to spend rather than hold. Right? It just depends on the inflation rate. Like in Venezuela and Bolivar, like people are incentivized to spend immediately. You know, yeah. because as soon as they get a paycheck, they have to run to the to the store and get some money because the purchasing power drop is like uh, almost i don't know 15 percent per month like they yeah. had they have to do it quickly 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 uh with us like dollars the next easier, day food still might be more spend, expensive right? how crazy is that yeah. that's insane yeah but with bitcoin you 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 naturally okay you, you naturally want to sit sit back and uh, not spend yeah. which will naturally increase the age of your money because you are going to start spending money that you earned before let's say the the thing that you earned today that sets that you stacked today will pay your uh, groceries expenses in the next month or next two months in the next in the in three months from now yeah. so you are always spending over time your money is aging more and more so once you get let's say once you are spending money that you earned a year back right which is what you will get. Uh, I mean, you will get into this position that you are now spending money that you that you have earned one year uh, before. You get so much peace with that. Like you are, it's like, it's it's crazy because um, it, it it throws you out of this hamster wheel that that uh, fiat standard that slavery is actually holding yeah. many of us in. Like people it are just warps our you know, thinking. It literally warps our perception warps, of reality. Warps your thinking yeah. in the most um, parasitic way because exactly. we don't even notice it, right? Like I even notice it when I go to spend fiat. If I have some Canadian dollars, like I I have yeah. some Canadian cash that I had, where it's yeah. like you know if I need cash, I have it. Now it's like I literally try and get rid of it, like it's like it's a, a yeah. disease causing, okay. and I notice it because I want to spend that fiat. I'll even spend it on, you know, I'll spend more than I would if it was sats by a long shot, right? I, like, I want to get rid of this shit. Whereas the best thing to do is actually convert it to sats so that I'm careful with all my spending. Exactly. And I, I you exactly. know, I've noticed that firsthand. And I think it really does 
change your thinking fundamentally. Like you are, you are literally just a more calculated spender. Um, you, your exactly. economic decisions are so much deeper in the thought you put into them. Even your, your mundane ones go through many layers of filters. Like, do I need this? Do I need this type of this? Like, what am I, like, I don't yeah. want to spend this. But if I need something, yeah. I will, but I'm going to make sure I really need that before I spend it. I'm not going to spend it on bullshit. And it, I, I feel it even firsthand, spending sats, sending someone sats versus spending dollars, yeah. totally different thinking. Yeah, exactly. And then you also, you can also then start uh, thinking in, in much longer time frames. but really not just uh, kind of um, before, before I... Before I got onto onto full Bitcoin standard, I was uh, I also held Bitcoin, but I didn't I I, I knew that okay this Bitcoin is gonna be m worth much more in the future, but it was kind of um, not really exact. I mean I I didn't really uh, let me give an example. So right now I can uh, think about okay I'm gonna buy this house that costs I don't know. 400,000 US dollars, you know, that's my savings target. Maybe I don't have enough yet to buy it, but I'm going to put this savings target and I'm going to, you know, stack along the way to that savings target. And, uh, you know, the beautiful thing with Bitcoin is that every four years, <laughs> you, you kind of get this boost in, in purchasing power due to halving and, you know, all this supply demand dynamics that, that, that turn out basically, you you accelerate the time that that you need to save up for basically anything that you want to to to, to spend your money on yeah. and the, the the really beautiful thing with saving um you know and working towards something rather than buying you know the same house uh on on credit you know taking out the mortgage and entering that house right now and paying it off over over time is that over time that you are saving, that you are thinking about, you know, you are researching all the different options, all the different alternatives. Maybe, you know, maybe that's not, you know, at some point you, 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 you maybe change your mind, you know, along the way. Maybe you need a couple of years to save up. Maybe you need a full halving cycle. Maybe you need four years to save up enough money to buy that house, you know. Uh, but maybe in, in these four years, maybe you will change your mind because you will see something that's actually better for you uh, that, you can, that, that you can purchase. And whatever you do after you, you hit that savings target, because you will hit the savings target, even if you, if, even if you make your, your average or even below average hourly rate, if you're saving it Bitcoin, you will, you will compound this purchasing power like crazy because, you know, I mean, Bitcoin is still super super small it has so much room to 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 grow and to suck all of this monetary premium from all the other assets on itself so your purchasing power is going to go up tremendously and um and but this time that you took to to save up this money is the the time that you really enjoyed this research because if you think about it like almost half of your uh satisfaction when you buy something is this time that you spend kind of researching about it, you know, you know, uh, thinking about the options, you know, maybe alternatives and so on. Um, this anticipation that you are building, this is literally half of your, of your, of your satisfaction once you get the thing. And then once you get this, this thing, you are, you are much more kind of grateful for it. You are, you are enjoying it so much more. You are kind of uh, taking care of it. You are, um, even if, if it has some, you know, um, nothing is perfect, but if it has some miss, you know, some stuff that's not, not ideal, you are still, you, you still enjoy it much, much more. While if you buy this same thing on, uh, with debt, right. With money that you still haven't saved up for, you still haven't had this inflow. Now, you know, of course you will get this satisfaction immediately but it's going to wear off like with everything. And then once it wears off, once it wears off, you're kind of left with this. Okay. Now you are, you have to have, you have payments for this thing that you bought and you are, you are noticing all the shortcomings and imperfections in the thing, which kind of, you know, bother you even more because you are, it's just not, it's like 
what people are saying it's not it, it turns in the in the curse instead of blessing right yeah. everything that you that you have if it's bought outright without debt with the money that you saved up for right this work that that went into saving money and then you purchase the thing it, like you um it's you cherish like that you, thing far you more. cherish the thing and this is beautiful because um because then you will be you will have this sense of contentment with the thing that you have you will be able to continue saving to maybe upgrade that thing in the future right with but still using it i mean i i love all the things that i bought with uh since i <laughs> like there, there is no there are no things that i bought that i feel right now that i wasted wasted money uh right. on them uh I know that many Bitcoiners are kind of afraid. Okay, if I if I spend my Bitcoin now, it's gonna be worth more in the future, and I'm gonna be you know in misery because you know I could have saved that Bitcoin and buy, buy ten times more. What but if you die really, and then the Bitcoin doesn't go anywhere? <laughs> doesn't it doesn't it doesn't really it doesn't really work that way. I mean, yeah. how it really works is that your your work your your proof of work, especially now you know in these bear markets, you know when you have this purchasing power going down this is where you really really invest your your kind of your soul into this service of others and then you get rewarded with you know your stack gets so 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 large so so powerful and then you know you you kind of enjoy the fruits of your of your hard work in the in the bull market that's when you you know when when everyone is kind of crazy about buying bitcoin right you are actually you are selling, right? You are, you are literally, yeah. you, you are you're now, spending. you are spending, you are spending, you are hitting your savings targets. You are, you are, you know, you're just enjoying your life. You can take your vacation. You can, you can do whatever you want. I mean, it's like, it's so beautiful and you are not fixated on the, the other, one other good thing is that you, you start, you stop being fixated on the amount of sets that you have because um doesn't, doesn't matter. Like, again, one Bitcoin today is much more valuable. It's much it has much more purchasing power than ten thousand Bitcoin had in twenty ten when uh, Las Lohanians bought his uh, two pizzas for them. Right? I mean, ten thousand BTC had like thirty dollars of purchasing power in two thousand ten. And if someone offered you ten thousand BTC in two thousand ten, you would be like, I mean, what's this? What what can I do with it? I mean, you couldn't really right. do anything with it except find someone on a forum you know some obscure forum to 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 exchange it for for two pizzas really now if someone offers you one btc you know just have it i mean you are going to say oh my god you are are you crazy like you are you are giving me one whole btc and you know in 10 years you know if someone gives you 100,000 sats like that's going to be oh my god that's crazy like it's it's if like only it's 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 going to be even more um so 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 the, the point is that we should kind of i mean when you get to the bitcoin standard you stop you start stop bothering about the exact amount of sets you have right. but you what you will see over time that um that it doesn't really matter right you you don't really care about the nominal amount of money you have you care about your purchasing power right. and your purchasing power is going to go up regardless especially if you are again on a full bitcoin standard because then you are just your incentives are completely aligned to do the, exactly the right thing the thing that all the traders are always trying to do buy low sell high yep. and by and default you've hard coded default, that right? literally by exactly. you've made one choice and then all of the other choices have been made for you and the invisible hand exactly. that nudges your behavior nudges you towards saving not wasting exactly and there is something so beautiful so ethereal like spiritual Very about elegant. it because yeah, because you feel like, oh my God, I'm connect I'm I'm literally holding money that's so pure, that's that's like pure truth, mathematical, thermodynamic, you know, energy converted from the sun and stars <laughs> and earth and everything, you know, uh, converted through these minor rigs into this uh, beautiful money that nobody can can mess around with, nobody can can, you know, and I'm now part of this. And it, it kind of motivates you even more, especially, let's say, it, it can be brutal sometimes when Bitcoin goes down a lot. Like you can you can get scared, but this is good. I almost think it's like good type of scared. It's like we all have this sense of fear in us, in this this kind of, um, 
adrenal glands in our body which serve the purpose like if you were you know going around in a in a, in a jungle and if you you know you went to a safari and if you see a lion you know 100 meters you know from you you are gonna get scared and you will you know you will focus your 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 body your everything to to get to safety like get to the car stop the bullshit that you are doing just just move to safety that's that's, <laughs> that's a great that's metaphor the, that's, that's a great, great metaphor exactly that's that's the fear that you have right and but it serves you right it, it protects you right it yes. protects you from the line or from from some for some danger it's adaptive well with fiat the fear is different right that's that's kind of uh, insidious type of, of fear that that kind of builds up over time and it manifests in this anxious feeling that most people have right now in the world because they are up to their eyeballs in that and they, they just don't know they feel this threat but they don't see it right it's not visible it's not lion looking at you and you can't really channel where are you going to channel this this threat if you see a lion you're going to put all of your energy into escaping by moving away to safety right and then that's it that's the same thing with bitcoin but bitcoin it's, almost like, a lot. it's almost like fiat is you're standing there's tall grasses around you you know there's a lion somewhere you have no idea where it is when it's exactly. going to come out and you can take zero action because you're stuck there that's fiat yeah whereas whereas like on the bitcoin standard it's like i see the lion i can react it's adaptive it's good you know instead it's like a short acute burst of fear which stimulates an adaptive response which is exactly what we're designed for as opposed to this long drawn out chronic fear and uncertainty yeah. and anxiety that disables your ability to take action and get keeps you stuck in this rut of anxiety yeah. that's the fiat equivalent that's the fiat and the, the 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 crazy thing about fiat is that it's it's not so intense that you can actually take hard action to right. to move away from it it's it's subtle but it's poisonous over time right it's kind of yes. it's almost like you are infected with something like in this jungle, something bit you, some or 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 you got you got some parasite, and it's slowly sapping you from from energy, and you don't really feel it at first, or you 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 feel something is wrong, but you don't know what's wrong, and over time you are kind of getting more, you know, kind of uh, you know, you're exhausted, dying, basically. Yeah, like, dying a slow death. With Bitcoin, you are just okay. Oh my god, this. Oh my god, now I dropped the down okay i'm gonna survive okay let me open my budget reconcile yeah. the budget okay reduce okay okay am i gonna survive yes you're gonna survive you still have you still have inflows coming in you still have your you know you, you still have food there's so much more time until you get to this kind of crazy i mean i know people are mostly scared because if they go all into bitcoin what's gonna happen if it all goes down really oh my god i'm gonna die <laughs> no you're not gonna die i mean that's yeah. that's the feeling right what we yeah. have but once we overcome that feeling then it's it's really easy uh so and it's uh yeah it, it's really it's really beautiful so and it strengthens your 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 it grows you as a person because especially in this yeah. in these times of bear market like uh you're literally you are learning many things on on uh, how can you how can you optimize your spending for example you can you can instead of buying uh, uh you know your meat every day uh in a in a butcher shop maybe you are going to buy half beef right maybe you will think about uh and you will get much much uh, better quality meat for less money actually but you need to put some more thought into that because that's not as as easy as just going into the, your supermarket and just buying the first thing that you that you see there so and that's something that you can do you're economizing right your resources you can do that with all your different things with your clothing with your with your transportation with everything you can literally uh, do tremendous gains that you carry out you carry them on uh in the in the next in in the times in the future it's not like you forget how to economize your spending once your bull market comes and you know you're just you're continually improving on this path so i really really recommend to everyone to to, to at least try it especially for young people who are i mean I mean, you have so much, um, I mean, why not try? Because it's literally today, it's, it's really possible. There are so many tools. I, I'd really just think about more, think more about how can you do it on a practical level? Like yeah. does your, for example, in Canada, do you have, do you have so, uh, such an exchange uh, like Binance with, 
I know that Coinbase also has this uh, this card that you can basically use as uh, you know you can hold a BTC on it and uh, convert to to fiat at the point of purchase. Like if you can do that, if you can get any 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 solution like that, I mean you are, it's it's beautiful. It you you can do it immediately. Coin if debit can, has. Coin Debit yeah. has a card that anyone can get, I believe. They sent me some to demo during the convoy, which is yeah. same thing. You load it up with Bitcoin, you spend it in whatever. And I think what's cool, I believe this is the case, is whatever uh, fiat, you, uh, whatever fiat currency is used in the location you're spending, it will auto convert to that fiat. So if I'm in the United States, Perfect. I'll spend it, I'll get charged 10 US dollars. It'll auto convert yeah. Bitcoin to US That's dollars. It. If That's I'm it. in Europe, it will auto convert yeah. to Euro. To Euro, um, yeah, exactly. And you, you have all these tools that are only getting smarter and smarter. You have this exactly. ecosystem. It's only going to get better with that. Uh, so Exactly. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, one thing that came to mind there was this idea that um, a mortgage and even the word mortgage, like I, you know, I speak French. Mortgage in French, mortgage means death deed. So death literally deed, a mortgage, yeah. mortgage is no. proof of death. Saving to buy that, something yeah. is proof of work. And those are very exactly. different things. Um, and I've started to actually look at debt um, in the form, uh, the equivalent of debt in health is disease. Yeah. When you are is. diseased, when you have debt, you are automatically high time preference because you exactly. are in trouble and you need yeah. to react, right? Um, and when you're out of debt, you are free. Right? You have exactly. way more options. You don't have tunnel vision because you don't have this one problem that's taking all your attention to focus on and draining all your attention from everything else. So that was one thing I wanted to mention. And then the other thing too, when you were talking about savings, right? And this idea where you make a savings goal, it's kind of like you're yeah. in a boat, a uh, sailboat, yeah. and you pick a lighthouse. And you're like, I want to get to that lighthouse. Yep. Saving in fiat is like having trying to go against the wind and paddling every day as hard as you can and exactly. the wind is pushing you back, right? There's something literally perpetually slowing you down. Whereas Bitcoin is, you put the oars away, you flip the sail, the wind is pushing you towards the goal. And every four years, a giant gust blasts yep. you forward. Um, and, and you just get, instead of fighting against the current and against the wind, you are working with the wind. And once in a while, you get a big gust that, that gives you five years worth of progress in six yep. months. And exactly. You know, you have to you have to be willing to accept that the seas and the Bitcoin waters are are less stable, right? You're not, you're not going to get like, you know, instead of a small amount of wind against you at twenty uh, all the time, you might get bursts of wind that go against you, bursts of wind that go for you. But on on average, on par, if you take yeah. it in year chunks, you are getting way more help from the wind um, in the Bitcoin world yeah. to get you to where you want to go way quicker than the fiat world where you constantly have this tiny little bit of wind against you. You're still making progress, but it's so slow. You may as well just be in the same spot, right? You're working to paddle as hard as you can and you're like moving a tiny bit. So yep. I, I think these metaphor, I, I think these metaphors are helpful because I use them all the time when I'm explaining this to people, right? Like you literally zoom out. You even, you know, don't even get into the weeds of Bitcoin. You just say like, this is how I view saving in Bitcoin versus saving yeah. in fiat. And this is why I choose Bitcoin. And I think when people can make a mental image of these metaphors, they can see like, yeah, that makes way more sense when you word it like that. I'm more interested. Um, and, you know, I, I, I think I have a little story to share that it, from the other day, I was walking around, there's a new condo going up. I go into the... Um, display center where you go in and you can learn about this new condo. They're just about to break ground. So I was walking around. It was crazy hot. I wanted shade. I walked into this um, center and I walk in and uh, a lady walks out. She's quite old. She's like in her high 70s, early 80s. So number one, I'm like, this lady should not be fucking working at 80 years old. This is probably, this is the result of a fiat world, right? Yep. Um, so she comes out, she pulls out a price list and I was curious. I'm like, you know, like when they're breaking ground now, I'm curious how long it's going to take for them to build this and what are, what are the prices like? She's going through all the prices and she pauses for a second. She's like, you know, this seems all really crazy considering what it was like in the old days. And so I kind of like pause on that for a second. I'm like, you know, her, her name's Mary. I said, Mary, do you remember the first house you bought? when you bought it, what you paid and what you were making at the time. And she's like, I remember perfectly. She bought a house in 1985. It was a two story condo in Toronto. She bought it for $75,000. And at the time her salary was $30,000. So this idea that 
what you buy, what she bought as her first home as a multiple was around two to 2.5 times what she was making in her, as her salary. Yeah. Now we're looking at these condos that are six to seven hundred thousand dollars for t- for something way smaller than what she bought, and if you're making an average salary of sixty thousand dollars, that multiple is yeah. ten. Yeah. The the accommodation you're buying is ten times what your annual salary is versus for Mary. And even more because over time it's gonna accelerate even more. The inflation right. is gonna just go up. So it's inflation and interest 15. rates. So it just, yeah. I don't know, it was just this crazy thing yeah. where I didn't even mention any, I was just curious about like how much these things cost. And she paused and she said, this is so weird because when I was live, when I was buying houses, it was a totally different world and something's not right. Like I got the, I got the notion that Mary was like, something's off here. I don't know how to put my finger yeah. on it, but it was, off. and then we started talking about um, fiat and we started to, you know, she, you could tell not a lot of people are going into that sales center. Cause Mary just loved to talk. And I was like, you know yeah, what, yeah, yeah. I'm here for it. I got an hour. I got nothing to do. So I'm picking <laughs> her brain and you know, we start talking about Bitcoin. I, she's like, what do you do for work? I'm like, well, I work for a company, um, that pays me to teach people about money. And she's like, oh, you work for Primerica, which is like a financial services company. I was like, no, I work for a Bitcoin <laughs> company. So I help people understand how money actually works. I'm not trying to sell products i'm trying to yeah, just yeah, yeah. literally educate people for free so now when i left mary knew more about bitcoin than when i walked in and fundamentally in my brain i was like that's what orange pilling is if you yes. have a conversation with someone and they know a tiny fraction like a tiny bit more about bitcoin than before you spoke to them you have done something to aid their process of being orange pilled and i think if we all just have the goal of you know i'm not trying to get mary to put all of her money in bitcoin in in our first conversation i'm trying to get married (laughs) not yet i'm trying to get married to connect the dots of this is really weird these prices and the way things are i don't understand Mm -hmm. why oh maybe it has something to do with the money and just that little like putting those dots there and then giving mary some time to marinate and connect those dots so that the next conversation we have can be a little bit can go a little bit deeper um that was just a very satisfying experience. Let me and just I think pause for, I, that for a second. And Mary yeah. needed it. Keep keep the thought. Just just a moment. Yeah, no problem. Someone was knocking. That's okay. They got the pause okay. recording okay. button, so uh, yeah, I'm I'm like quick to jump on that now. Um, yeah. So the yeah, lady... that was the end of the story yeah. with Mary. I mean, it was just a very satisfying experience where someone who you know, probably looked at Bitcoin as this weird thing. She had nothing, didn't want anything to do with, or didn't know it was relevant to her. And now she kind of has at least a rudimentary framework of the money is the root problem of why all of these things are going wacky. Bitcoin is a better form of money. Um, and who knows? I don't know if she'll do anything with it, but you know, when, when one of her grandkids mentions Bitcoin, she'd be like, Oh, Bitcoin again, something's there. This is the second time I've heard this. So, you know, no one is too old for Bitcoin. No one is too young for Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin is for everyone. And yeah, I think any, you know, these, these subtle nudge, these subtle touch points you can, you can leave with people. They're like little gifts you leave with people, right? It doesn't cost you anything to give that gift. Um, and the other person, if they're ready can benefit immensely. So why not? It's like a smile, right? It doesn't cost you anything. If you like talking about Bitcoin, (laughs) you do it anyway. And, uh, yeah, it's, um, you know, I did a podcast the other day with a with a Bitcoiner, and we we use the metaphor of Bitcoin is like a, like a train, right? The Bitcoin Express. When you get on it, you don't you never get off, and it stops at many stations, right? It stops at the station of macroeconomics. It stops at the station of how money works, right? You stop at these stations, and you learn different things, and you end up learning about a broad diversity of of things related to human existence, and. The only way you can get on the Bitcoin Express is if you're given a ticket. And if you're a Bitcoiner, every time you bring up the term Bitcoin, you give someone a free ticket and you welcome them to join this Bitcoin Express. And the end yep. result of where you get to on the Bitcoin Express is a way better life. And so, you know, we're all very incentivized to give out these tickets. They cost us nothing. Um, definitely, and, definitely. And it's, it, I don't know, it's, it was a cool way of thinking of it. And it's also in our best interest, for example, uh, yes. yeah. One of the th- one of the excellent things on a full Bitcoin standard is that, like I'm unabashedly honest about my uh, motivations on orange peeling someone. I want you to orange peel. I want you to hold all your money in Bitcoin because that's gonna that's gonna pump my my BTC like yeah. over uh, not you know on the margin. It's it's yeah. it's it's very small, but 
but really this mindset is okay i get it because if all of us hold our money in bitcoin if we all hold our savings in bitcoin that's that's rising the the, the purchasing power of of everyone so uh and uh, and it's honest completely and it's uh it's it's not that it's not like well i with fiat yeah if you are saving in fiat you're just giving the collateral for for the you know elite to to be able to print more right because it it's how it works yeah um uh, so and uh yeah it's beautiful and i, th- I think we are also going to get much much more effective in 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 orange peeling others over time especially again uh if you if you really switch to the full bitcoin standard because you will be able that's that's what i do for example when i speak with with people right now um sometimes people will say okay but uh how can i i mean i, I can't spend bitcoin anywhere and i say no i can I, I just went to a grocery store this is the bag that i bought with it was paid with bitcoin yeah. and it's true this is the 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 little uh, motorcycle that i bought with bitcoin this is the everything that i have is 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 bought with bitcoin so so i can um and it's it's really true i mean I, it's it, it converted in, in in fiat but it was paid with uh, bitcoin balance it's not uh, it wasn't paid with uh, you know air <laughs> right. so 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 you so you get this um as as people see that your quality of life is improving um and uh, you you kind of uh, they start to notice that and uh, i know that from my experience with uh, talking with uh, with people here in rab uh, i know that they see this i know that they see the they see me kind of you know <laughs> growing in these two two years uh, in a very tremendous pace that uh, that like uh because i didn't really start with uh, any you know big uh, big amount of money big stack i i was i worked in a startup we didn't really make uh, so much money i still have some equity tied up in it i would like to liquidate it as soon as possible but it's kind of a little bit complicated still uh it's like um um i mean people notice that and uh and uh, it it really it really works uh and once one more thing is uh, something that something to mention uh, is that with uh, on a full Bitcoin standard, even though you have this, yeah, you have massive increase in purchasing power every four years, but in between, you still have this, uh, you know, times when you know Bitcoin, Bitcoin can pump. Like right now, in the last month, I see that Bitcoin is up over thirty percent. My cash, my my purchasing power went up because we were at one point, what one point, you know, moving around eighteen, nineteen thousand dollars per, per coin. Mm. Now we are at twenty two, twenty three. Uh, you know, I saw saw today, and it's like feels that the the floor is kind of uh, strengthening. You know, the kind of higher lows over time in this in this month. I think we are really the the bottom is pro- most likely in, and um, and it's like beautiful from 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 here and you you really quickly like these big drawdowns in price you may think i mean people will think oh my god that's gonna like shock me so much i'm gonna be like depressed for i don't know how many how much time but it really doesn't work that way you kind of get over it as soon as you bal- as you ban- balance your budget like you you get this sense of relief okay now i'm back in full control okay and it takes maybe a couple of days to, for this big shock of the Bitcoin's purchasing price drop to wear off, and you are back in in normal. Like it's just it, you, you recalibrate. Just, basically. You recalibrate, yeah. And you, you suddenly your your okay. Now I now my hourly rate went up in Bitcoin. Now my expenses also went up in Bitcoin, right? In Bitcoin terms, but I'm still making this. Uh, I'm actually increasing the the delta between uh, inflow and outflow because I'm again optimizing spending, increasing earning, right? Working, working more, working more smart. You know, trying to think about more things that I can, that I can, more value that I can that I can create. So it's it's really, uh, yeah. I mean, from the from the psychological, from the mental standpoint. You really get this Zen, this 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 piece, uh, which you don't really get when when you hold any any meaningful amount of fiat cash balance because it just insulates you from the from this effect that you really want. You want this effect to to work on you. You want to adjust your 
your behavior when you're you know regarding how how this you are i like i love your your example with the boat and the you know sailing because the journey is really it it can be very you know stormy journey but you are in a very very secure boat that's never gonna go, get sunk that's like uh protected it cannot get uh, broken it cannot get uh you know turned around it, it's just it's it's just, but it can be very you know wild ride yeah but if you know how to ride the boat if you know your your expenses if you if you're constantly in a balanced uh zero based budget it's 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 fine it's beautiful it's uh it's just exciting ride right that can uh you know it can reward you in while you are waiting for the Twenty percent decrease in purchasing power. You tightened up your spending. You earned more. Next month, you 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 went up forty percent, right? And you just yeah. you, you 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 again you you adjust yourself, right? You you are you, now you spend a little bit more. It's yeah. it's beautiful, and uh, I know that um, the war that like the biggest risk with uh, with um, uh, with bit. I mean, it's not a risk because anybody. Who, However, as long as you hold some a little bit of Bitcoin, you will increase. I mean, you will see it grow. But uh, the risk with uh, kind of uh, trading or holding any fiat balance, which now I really just think about it, it's like trading. <laughs> I don't really want to trade, right. uh, but you know. But this is how I think about it. The risk, the biggest risk, is that you may miss uh, the this huge upside because that happens in. A very few days you know in in this whole like most of the gains i think i don't know exactly what's the what's the number but let's say out of 365 days in a year all the gains all the big uh ups are maybe in 14 days right something like yeah. that and you may miss out you may be sitting in in fiat and you can't time you, that you, you, you can't time you it. can't time that yeah yeah so, so you're constantly like trying to time it but you are out leveling yourself you are literally working against your your instinct your emotions when you are trying to predict and you can predict i mean you can you can have very very high you know percentage of of uh you know like being sure about what's bitcoin price gonna do in the next month or so or whatever but still you are it's so hard for you to act and it's even harder to act on that consistently and being you know, it's it's just too hard. You, all of that energy that you are spending on that, on trying to time it, really, is the energy that you should put in the in these two things: optimizing outflows and increasing inflows. Yeah, and you will. It's 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 not even comparable. Like you, it's orders of magnitude more more money that you that you are gonna stack. You more you will end up with much more uh, sats uh, in the end. And that's sure. a huge amount of energy, right? Like the energy, the emotional energy. Um, the idea of constantly having it be on your mind that there's a huge amount of yeah. energy that you could be putting towards just being of more service to others and collecting more exactly. IOUs exactly. for the service you're offering. Um, and, you know, Michael Saylor said something a while back in a tweet. He said that people who know less than you about Bitcoin are determining the price of Bitcoin right now. And this idea that as someone who is holding Bitcoin, I am not part of the bid ask system that is currently determining the price of Bitcoin. And this sort of made me think of something that Jack Mahler said a while back. He said, you know, I live in an apartment. If the person above me who has the exact same apartment uh, has a life emergency and has to sell their apartment, you know, say my apartment's worth 200,000, they have to sell theirs at 50,000 because they have to liquidate it right now. They need the money. They're getting a divorce, whatever. They have an emergency. If they sell their apartment for $50,000 because they're in a bind and they had to, it doesn't make my apartment worth $50,000, right? Like they're, they are the marginal seller, but they are not determining the value of my apartment. The value of my apartment is whatever I choose to end up selling it for, right? And so exactly. the value of my Bitcoin, if someone's willing to sell a Bitcoin for $20,000, that doesn't indicate the value of my Bitcoin. If, you know, my Bitcoin uh, has a value of a million dollars in my brain, and I'm not ready to yeah. part with my Bitcoin right now for anything less than a million dollars. So the price of my Bitcoin hasn't changed. Like my old man, you know, we, we have these battles at family dinners every Sunday where my old man's invested in real estate. I'm invest, I, I'm not even, he's invested in real estate. I save in Bitcoin and we have this contrasting opinion. He, he loves to throw these jabs where it's like, well, your Bitcoin's worth 70% less. And I'm like, no, it's not. 
I haven't sold it. It's not worth anything less than it was a month ago or two months ago. <laughs> um, and, or sometimes he'll say like, you know, he'll say these short term things. I'm like, did your house increase 10% last yesterday? Cause, cause my money increased 10% compared to your house. So stomach that. But I, I really think this whole idea that every person, the, the hodlers are not affecting the price, right? All the, all the crypto bullshit getting liquidated. These are the people forcing, being forced to sell their apartment for $50,000. That's not affecting what my Bitcoin is worth. Right. And I think taking that approach has eliminated a lot of this volatility where if I'm just consistently stacking sats, converting my, my inflows into sats, I'm actually, I have this huge opportunity to, to two to three to four fold my stack per unit of fiat coming in. This is a good thing, right? It's no longer something yeah. where I'm in an emergency saying, oh, my Bitcoin's worth less. It's not because I haven't sold this, these short-term marginal sellers are determining, determining the market price of Bitcoin, but the hodlers who are refusing to sell their Bitcoin uh, aren't actually voting because they don't give a shit about the short-term voting game. Like this is just a game, this is a game of traders. Um, they're in it for the long term, and, and the price that they're willing to sell their Bitcoin for is what their Bitcoin is worth, which means it's different for every person. Um, and when you take that mindset, it actually, like you said, it actually makes these dips really cool opportunities to be happy about. And one thing I always think of is like, someone in El Salvador has a chance to buy 100 sats for 25% for off. This is like a beautiful opportunity for the rest of the world to get rich until the world at large realizes how valuable this energy backed money is. And so I think it's a mindset. It, it really, when you take that perspective, it's a mindset shift where you're not actually concerned when the price goes down because you understand what it's backed by. Um, and you actually view it as a good thing and as an opportunity to increase the value you give to the world because you get paid 4X on your yep. IOUs now um, and help other people get in at a, at a really opportune time. So I think it's really just about switching. And, and his thinking, my old man's thinking, is fiat thinking. That's what I'm trying to <laughs> convey is, to him. Like, you are thinking from the framework of uh, manipulated money. And so we're always going to butt heads because I'm in reality with truth. You're in fiat world thinking you're getting rich because your shitcoin real estate is going up in fiat terms. <laughs> whereas yeah, yeah. I can show you what your house is worth uh, in terms of Bitcoin. It's getting cheaper every year despite exactly. it despite it seeming like it's getting more expensive right and it's like this this weird illusion where you might be measuring the value of something with a shitty measuring stick and it's tricking you into thinking you're gaining value but if the measuring stick is constantly being manipulated then yep. everything's so out of whack you can't even make good economic calculation you can't because you're being <laughs> you're being fooled like hypnotized by this weird thing yeah, yeah I also I also have this uh, like thought experiment that I like to kind of run sometimes in these discussions. Like, let's let's just let's try to imagine. Uh, let's teleport ourselves into you know, two thousand one hundred and forty fifty year. You know? All the bitcoins are mined. Let's say all the fiat currencies are you know hyper hyperinflated already, and we are living on a full. You know, everybody on the world they all hold bitcoin and they still uh, you know they they save in it they spend it they they earn it and uh, we we don't even have the conception of you know exchange rate with fiat or you know buying and selling bitcoin it's it's people don't think about it you know right. they, they just like you you don't think about buying and selling canadian dollars you just you know earn canadian dollars and you you spend it so Imagine this world. You will still have uh, you, the Bitcoin's purchasing power is still going to fluctuate, because what's going to happen is that uh, you know you, th there there probably be you know years or th times you know or months whatever you know the, the time length will be when more people are in the save mode and not spending mode. In which case the purchasing power of Bitcoin is going to go up. You know. On the, mar on the margin yeah. and on the other hand once they start spending more than 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 uh, um, than holding is when the purchasing power is going to go down right so you will still have these waves so um i don't think the the volatility of bitcoin is going to go away ever right it's still it's not going to be linear right 
it may be it may be slower like, like the the mag the the amplitude of this uh, wave may be lengthened and uh, kind of being more maybe more um i don't know how how yeah how the peaks in the troughs will level yeah. out so they're not as extreme but they're still going to be there but you will still have them you will still yeah. have them because uh, uh the world is not linear right it's it's yeah. kind of humans are emotional also like dynamic yeah, <laughs> built in <laughs> humans are emotional which is which is not a bad thing right yeah. and uh, as long as you think that we will we will be mortal beings that have a uh, limited lifespan maybe we will increase our lifespan maybe we will live more than several hundred maybe we're we're going to live four or five hundred years you know in the in the distant future maybe our bodies will be able to to be you know to live in this realm in this dimension for much more for a couple of centuries i i agree but you will still that still means that you will just have a lower time preference your time preference is never going to go to zero right you will never be uh eternal right i mean as long as you are physical i mean let's we can get into the soul and this uh, <laughs> spiritual discussion. I, I believe our souls are eternal, but our bodies are are not. We are likely to increase the, the lifespan of the body, but it's unlikely that we will be eternal in, in this body. And what's eternal either way? So the only thing, the only way, if you really go, if you, if you, if you kind of unwind this logical kind of, uh, conclusion to the, to its end when people say i'm never going to sell my bitcoin i'm never going to spend it's i'm i'm hold, holding forever that means that you are just that you kind of think that your time preference can go to zero and it cannot it cannot yeah. it can lower a lot and you can live much higher quality of life if you lower your time preference but you can go to zero um and uh yeah, so so I think what I'm getting from our conversation <laughs> today is this this idea that yeah. we love to use this term of hyper bitcoinized world or our bitcoin standard yeah. as this ephemeral thing that we will be at at some point. Um and I've heard uh, Peter from what Bitcoin did talk about this a lot mm -hmm. where that is actually a personal choice. You are already on yeah. that, right? You already live exactly. on a bitcoin. You as far as Pavel's life is concerned, you are living individually in a hyper bitcoinized world on a bitcoin standard because you've chosen to do so and i think this idea that you know one thing that i realized from this conversation is i was sort of looking at that as i will live on that standard when my income is in sats but what i just realized is like if i auto convert my income to sats yeah i'm already there <laughs> and it's, exactly you know and i think it it just you know everything you said about it sharpening sharpening your decisions to make you wiser in the choices you make because you're actually considering trade-offs much more deeply than just you're not you're not being hijacked by the superficial incentives of fiat anymore you're actually grounded in the reality of sound money and have to make much sharper judgments uh, about what you spend on and what you don't spend on and what you save um and so yeah, I mean, this, you know, our last conversation, you talked about giving more. Now I tip 21% everywhere I go. Cause nice, it's, and it's nice, been beautiful. very satisfying and I haven't had to actually make <laughs> any amendments to my way of living, right? Yeah. Um, so I took that from last one and this one's going to be, all right, mission is get on a Bitcoin <laughs> standard and uh, start you, looking at the world through Bitcoin I'd lenses. I'd be super happy to help you out with it. Uh, it's uh, something that I had, had to give my, a little bit of support to my brother. Pleb yep. Music is again also uh, working right now on it. Uh, he's nice. uh, we had a long discussion, you know, a week ago about it, and uh, he's also maybe gonna. Uh, I, I actually he 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 pulled the trigger. He ordered the card, and now he just needs to set up the budget. And uh, I nice. think you know, be glad to help him out with you know very technical things and how yep. to how to really do it you know properly so that you don't get scared or, or whatnot and. Yeah, I think um, I'm also like uh, right now trying to kind of uh, uh, do a little bit of more structured like uh, content series. I don't know the format still. Maybe I'm going to write something. I actually started, you know, writing down some some um, bullet points on the on how to really do it. All the all the benefits and practical tips and tools on how to live on the on zero fiat because I like a playbook yeah like a playbook because 
it's it there there's really a, la a huge lack of, i think of resources on uh, how to do it this zero fiat crew that uh, is uh, around twitter i mean they are <laughs> i don't really for example i don't agree with the idea of using credit cards uh to mm. to, to to do it i i don't i don't like touching any 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 debt at all like zero debt because i think it's it's massive difference in your state of being in your in your kind of um just your spiritual kind of energy that you are giving off if you if you are completely debt free or even if you have a little bit of debt right you may be in a positive uh, net worth like right? your assets are much larger than your liabilities but you still have this this little nagging like almost like a little sucker that's like somewhere like a leech like, oh. somewhere like a leech that's invisible yeah. it's it's yeah. really a spiritual leech and i think you should get rid of it completely <laughs> so 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 that you can be okay you're in a clear state right it's it's almost like i don't know how to how to explain it. your mind is in a different place yeah. from which you can actually make much more money basically and uh and uh and do it that you know just 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 perform much better so i think credit is uh leverage i mean it's like we call it credit yeah. as in something like we've, yeah. it, we've just accepted that credit and debt is part of uh society in a fiat world but really what it is is just leverage right you're you're bored you're yeah, it is you're trying to use more resources than you have and i i think exactly you know for me um i know that you know, I can make a spread on, it's almost like a game, you know, I've treated it like a game until now I get all these lines of credit offered to me at very low rates because I have a degree in physical therapy. And I'm like, well, if the bank's going to lend me 25 grand up to 25 grand at like 3%, why wouldn't I use some of that, like 10 grand and spot by Bitcoin when it goes to $18,000, you know? So, but what I'm realizing is you're right. That is always this thing um, that will always be there, need maintenance, is is sapping like there's an interest rate being charged on that even if it's low um and you know the temptation to use credit if yeah. it's if it's offered to you uh is there but i think you know our conversation to get living a more pure clear life requires you to have a clear monetary yeah. landscape to make your calculations Simple, based yeah. on and i think that requires us to have uh to to move beyond debt right to to really yeah have a clear image of like, what is our proof of work? Um, what are our inflows and outflows? And to get an unmanipulated view, financial snapshot of like the money in our life. And, you know, you mentioned Sailor talking about currency and money. I love his mindset of put most of your uh, energy into sound money. Currency is an application of money that you use as needed. You do not save in currency, yeah. right? Like you save in the money, have 98% of your value in the money, have 2% in the currency, because guess what? If the money is sound, the currency doesn't have to be. The currency is a utility token you're using to interact with the world that will only accept that token. But the goal is to have your wealth, your purchasing power, your energy fundamentally yeah. in sound money, and then use the applications of currency as needed. Because if the money has integrity, the currency doesn't need to. That's That was what stuck out to me when he talked. And it's like, that makes so much sense. But I want to have most of my energy, not in the low integrity yeah. thing, in the high integrity thing. Exactly, exactly. Powerful. And uh, yeah, definitely. And if you have all of your energy in it, even though, yeah, I mean, for some, like for Michael Saylor, for example, he he definitely holds you know, a relatively high amount of fiat on, on his yeah. hand, at least for like operating expenses that, that his company has or himself. Uh, but um, I think, I still think that uh, that the, probably the, the, the amount of mental energy that you need to expand to, to kind of uh, do it, using using leverage using uh using that is is too much and you still like you cannot recommend that to to everyone and to yeah. and for like for, for all cases and in all times for example right now interest rates went up and like are you gonna recommend it now uh or what's your conviction i mean like people are people are much more prone to go leveraged 
long to buy Bitcoin on credit during the bull market, right? Which is right. now, like, imagine that you are, if you are paying off, like, imagine now you, you are paying off, you bought Bitcoin at, I don't know, $55,000, right? Yeah. And you took out uh, a line of credit for it for like, I don't know, $20,000. So you bought what? You bought like a quarter half, or, or you bought a third half of a Bitcoin. Bitcoin. And now you're yeah. getting charged more interest. Your Bitcoin is now you're getting charged. Yeah. You are paying off monthly, monthly, monthly payment. And your your you know, BTC went down, you know, 60, 70%. And now just, just, just imagine the, the, the calculations, the aggregate yeah. that some people have right now. They are paying this amount of money every month towards paying off this debt. And this is the amount of money that they could be stacking triple the sets for that same amount if they if they you know. Uh, you know, the difference is three times more than a couple of months before. So if they just waited up, waited for Bitcoins naturally to, because again, Bitcoin is naturally going to go up and down, up and down. It's never going to go up linearly. It's it's illusion that we are never going to get that. And and you will be able to stack massive amounts of sets when 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 it goes down, when everybody is like uh, selling, you know, they, they are in fear. That's when you, when you basically, you are the one or all the people who are doing this, they are the ones who are stacking, uh, you know, yeah. the, the most, the, the, the highest rate. And um, while getting this, this benefits of, again, tightening spending, increasing earnings, all the good stuff that you don't get with, with, with that. With that, really, if you, if, even if you, let's say you got successful, uh, let's, let's, let's turn it around. Let's say you, you bought Bitcoin on credit you took a line of credit and you bought it on the bottom, let's say on the COVID crash. And you know, you made a killing. And let's say in the, just, 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 just try to imagine this, 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 uh, this situation. You, you took out $20,000 uh, loan, let's say in March, 2020, let's say you were so, so like, yeah. oh my God, so convinced. <laughs> let's just try, try to imagine. You took out the loan, you bought, what uh bitcoin fell down five btc let's say you bought five full, full bitcoins and now bitcoins went up to let's say fifty thousand dollars right uh at some point now your your btc is worth two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and you paid twenty thousand dollars in in credit in loan but what's most likely going to happen is you are not gonna like suddenly turn around and okay now I'm gonna you know stop going into that no you're gonna be oh my god I'm such a huge genius I'm now <laughs> gonna mortgage my house I'm gonna take yeah. out every single loan exactly. I'm gonna go 10x leverage on 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 the exchange 50x leverage I'm 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 genius I'm gonna start shit coining I'm gonna diversify I'm gonna make even more BTC because look at this look at Solana look at the you know all this different Luna you know yeah. <laughs> at that time you know in the yeah. what that was 2020 2021 early 2021 you you look like a genius you know Bitcoin sure. went up to fifty thousand dollars what you end up with like a most likely you will end up with huge amount of money you know going up but you will go down crashing. You know how many people are, you know, got, got, got wrecked right now with all this leverage, <laughs> leverage taking, because it's, I mean, it, from the old days, like this is the ancient wisdom, biblical wisdom. They always said that taking on debt, it's not a sin, but it's stupid. It's, it's biblical stupidity. It's stupid yeah. because, because you are playing with the future and future is uncertain. You don't know the future. And yes. and it's completely different to to live your life. It's a gamble. Trying to spend money from the future and navigate your present moment to to exactly align it to that timeline, the future that you kind of thought that you will make by taking out loans. That's stupid. While it's so easy, it's so clean, it's so orderly to just spend from the past. If you yes. can afford it, do you have money for this? Yes, then you can buy it if you want. If you don't have, then don't buy it. Like very simple. It's it's simple. <laughs> and over time, your wealth that you're building is gonna be such a solid wealth. Like like um, yeah, you may get to a millionaire status like quickly, 
using that, but <laughs> as quick as you get it, the likelihood is just growing that, that you're gonna lose it all just as quick as you as you got to it. While this way is just, you know, stacking slowly, slowly, I mean, slowly. Like you're, you're still, ex it's still so exciting because you don't really feel that you are slow. Like, again, today when I woke up and I saw Bitcoin went up 10%, it's like, oh my God, I'm so, oh, just, let's go, let's go. This is yeah. now, I, I, it's just, so you still get the the the, the benefit of uh, of of this excitement of uh, you know number go up, but you are doing something that you can sustain for the rest of your life. It's something that right. you can teach your children, your grandchildren, your grand grandchildren, your your everyone. It's timeless principle. Just yeah. don't touch that. Don't spend from the future. Don't spend money from you the don't past. Have. Very easy, exactly. And uh, and just all this mental energy, all these uh, things will will suddenly you know clear and you will be able to direct them towards you know wealth building the real wealth building real long sustainable wealth building and that's life. something that this is another thing too i think i think so much of our bandwidth and life energy gets sucked away by things we don't even realize we've self-imposed yeah where once you just clear all this chaff out all this background computing that's being done whether you realize it or not frees up computing space and you just have this huge bandwidth to spend on things you love to do to spend yeah. on things that are important and to spend on figuring out how you can maximize the value you give to the world because that's exactly. how you build wealth and I, I just think it's you know some people are under so much chaos that it's hard for them to even see the way out but bitcoin is like this rope that gets thrown down to everyone and you can climb out of the hole of chaos into the the air of clarity um mm. but you have to put in the work to climb the rope Right. And I think debt, sure. you know, th this issue of debt is like you, instead of climbing up the rope and doing the work, you attach to these balloons that lifted you out of the hole and you feel great because you're like, oh, this is so good. But then someone comes and pops your balloon and you're you're destroyed. And so it's better to yeah. earn your keep and work your way up and be less um, at the whims of external circumstances, which in today's world is like there's some crazy uncertainty on on many fronts. So, you know, yeah. unfortunately, the fiat mindset corrupts people into grabbing the balloons instead of just doing the work. And yeah, some people exactly. just have to have their bubbles popped enough to realize, well, I guess I should just climb the rope. And that, you know, that we all learn that lesson at different points. But I think when you start climbing the rope, you realize those balloons are not worth the trade off of my mental energy and the risk I'm taking on um, to just to erode all the wealth I've worked to build. Um, at, at, yeah. because there's some potential to get rich quick, um, it's not worth the trade-off. And, and I think no, just definitely. peace of mind alone is worth so much and people don't realize how much it's worth. Yeah, definitely. And Bitcoin is a technology and technologies can be dangerous as well. So for example, yeah. let, let's, let's take one other, other example. Uh, when, um, when people invented uh, internal combustion engine car, for example, uh, and let's say there's, I think Ford, Ford Motor is what was like a first car. Yep. So most of the people, like right now, most of the people are holding fiat and they have maybe 1% of, of population or however much hold some Bitcoin. Back then, most of the people were using, were, you know, either walking for their transportation or riding horses and carts, yep. right? And yep. you had so few cars that most of the people were like, this is dangerous. This is crazy. That's like, uh, oh my god! Like, it or could blow up. if you if you say, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna dollar cost average my car. Okay, I'm gonna drive this car just once per per month for five minutes, not more, because it's like, because still people didn't didn't know yeah, how to really risky. safely operate operate a car. Now it's it's normal for us, even though cars are like one ton, two tons worth of steel. That's you know, moving around at high speed, they can still kill you. They can still injure you heavily, but we know how, how to operate cars safely. Like I see, In and fact, you're not going to say- horse, oh, it's frigging dangerous. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So so today we, we know how to operate cars uh, safely. Uh, and uh, with Bitcoin, it's like to operate your life on a 100% Bitcoin standard safely, you need to get out of that and you need to learn how to uh, how to balance your budget, how to do zero-based budget. That's, I think, two tools that are indispensable for doing that. 
you know, 100%. Uh, just like with cars, like you are not going to go in a car if you were, you know, if you drank uh, so much alcohol that you are like, <laughs> that you don't, you basically see the double, everything in double. If you're fiat if, drunk, don't drive a car. If you are fiat, if, <laughs> it, yeah. It, it, if you are doing that, yeah, you will get, you will get, a, I mean, you, you can, you can, some, maybe, maybe nothing will happen, right? Maybe you will drive your car being super drunk yeah, maybe and maybe lucky. you will arrive at your, at your, uh, you know, pace safely. But if you turn that into a habit, like you're playing with, with chances, chances are you are going to get hurt doing that, right? Driving That's, a car while fiat drunk is like taking on leverage to buy Bitcoin. Exactly. Exactly. It's 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 just the touching leverage disaster. at all. It's it's literally like driving a driving car drunk, or let's say, or operating electricity. Another another technology that people were. I like Michael Saylor. He also he also likes to use these uh, metaphors. Like when when people invented electricity, like many most of the people were afraid of it because like. Yeah you know, the cables can fall down and it can, uh, you know, uh, there's lots of fun burn on fire and it can, uh, you know, shake you and what, what not today we know how to, how to operate electricity. You're still not, you, you will teach your kid if, you know, he's not going to use the, you know, uh, uh, fork or, a, or a knife and, you know, put it in the, in the, in electricity the socket. socket in the, on the, you know, or he's, if he is uh, wet, if he went to, you know, and, uh, washed his hands while his hands are still wet you don't touch the electricity when when you are wet right. because it's you know it can it can hurt you so we know these things how to operate electricity you know most most people know it and most people don't get electrocuted by electricity with bitcoin most people don't know how to use it really right now yeah. they 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 still they still try to kind of um, they they recoil because they don't i mean we are still so early but still 13 years old, I think now we can kind of start learning a little bit more on how to use it properly, right? Use it properly is just, just convert everything, you, all the cash, all the liquid cash balance you have in Bitcoin, and then move on from there and learn how to manage the volatility. Because um, there are so many benefits that, uh, that they out, if, you, if you operate it safely, they outweigh the, the, the negatives there, there are no negatives basically there is no negatives in electricity if you operate it safely there are no negatives in driving cars uh, if you operate again if you operate them safely yeah. but uh, you need to learn how to how to use the technology so i mean we we know we witnessed many people in this cycle as well they get got wrecked like like crazy yeah. <laughs> by misusing the this technology right they 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 you know i mean it's like <laughs> I mean, the hope so is I that we, when people get electrocuted yeah. by putting the fork in the socket, here's the problem. Most people blame electricity. Yeah, like, they blame like electricity. What, and, no. but, but it's really just, well, you shouldn't have done that. That was a stupid thing to do. So it's, you know, what you're <laughs> talking about writing, how, helping people live on a Bitcoin standard is like the user's yeah. manual for how to use this exactly. tool without getting wrecked. And I think that that, yeah. you know, someone who's truly interested and wants to read through that can, it's like, looking at a car as a giant dangerous death trap because you don't know how to use it to looking at a car as a tool to use to get to where you want to go faster if you yeah. know how to use it and i think if people just had the same equivalent for bitcoin um and had a playbook or like a protocol to follow where it's like i i understand it it's not as scary because now i know that the risks are really low if i just learn how to use this tool but I need, yeah. you know, some people need to get in a car accident to realize how much they need to pay attention when they're driving. And I think we had a lot of car exactly. accidents in the exactly. past year uh, and people are going to be ready. So, yeah. Um, and I also think yeah. that, I mean, a lot of education in Bitcoin space uh, in the last, you know, since, since it began was mostly oriented on how Bitcoin works as a technology. It's like, it's like, um, when you when you buy a car you don't really know how car really works i mean you are not if right. you, you're not unless you are a car engineer right you don't really know how email really works or how the how this uh, microphone really works or uh, you know light or whatever you, you may have like a very you know basic idea but you don't you are not really able to understand completely the intricacies of your how your smartphone works nor do you need so, to yeah, neither you need to. You just need to know how to use it, right? How to use it properly, how to use it safely. And that's really the, I think right now with this, with this bear market, uh, we are really, and this situation, you know, with this inflation in the, in the, in the world and uh, all of this kind of chaotic, 
kind of atmosphere. I think we really need now, we really need to focus on, on, uh, on just explaining people practical how to use Bitcoin because most everyone has at least heard about it, right? Yep. They, you know, they may, a little small number of people know, you know, has it, but still I would argue that they are not really using it correctly because they are still kind of in this frame. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit in, into Bitcoin and then I'm going to, you know, you know, I'm still going to, I still don't trust it enough to, to, to go all in. I still going to have some, some fiat balance because really there is no operating protocol really. It's, yeah. it's exactly what you, what you said. There is, there is hard, I mean, there is literally no resource. I was trying to, to search for some in the last couple of weeks um the things that i found were not 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 really so sound advice as soon as i saw credit card no don't yeah. no that's not the way to operate and there's many recipes that's the way to this. get electrocuted yeah yeah, yeah 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 there's many recipes for this so if you know um i mean it's hard to believe we've already been chatting for two hours so let's wrap it up now but <laughs> yeah you know if you if you are writing something putting something together you want other eyeballs on it or to get feedback yeah. just fire it over to me I i'm do. happy to read it um to everyone listening, we hope that was, Paval, thanks for your time, man. Like, I always enjoy these conversations. <laughs> a huge yeah. amount, the amount of metaphors, the amount of like little dots that get connected by hearing you talk and riffing off that. I think these are, um, you know, they come up very quickly on the 21st of each month-ish. But um, <laughs> yeah, to everyone listening, we hope you enjoyed it. Value for value on Fountain. Uh, I'll put a, um, a Bitcoin address, a main chain address on the YouTube link. If you're watching this on YouTube, that'll go towards helping Rab Orange Pill Rab. Um, and so, yeah, we'll sign off for now and just stick around for 30 seconds and we'll sign off after I'm done recording. So thanks for listening y'all and we'll catch you in a month.